don't want to freak anyone out, but what is that in front of us? HMS Duncan is a billion pound warship. On a brand new mission. I'm closing my position, clarify your intentions. You've seen the news, you know what's going on. Britain is sending a second warship to the Gulf as tensions rise. This is what we're here for. This Royal Navy destroyer is packed with the most advanced weaponry in the world. Our Sea Viper missile system is secret. By the time they're 50 feet, we've been round the grave three, four times the speed of sound. But 260 men and women also call it home. Like a married couple, but with no benefits whatsoever. Hopefully in the summer I'll come back. I love you. With exclusive access, our cameras have been invited back for Duncan's dramatic new seven-month deployment. Something's about to happen. It is a bit of a tense time. Illuminate contact at 390. It is scary. As the crew joined the fight to eradicate ISIS in Iraq and Syria. This is as close as you get to being on the front line. Get ready for the worst scenario. Your future at the minute is not certain. And they find themselves at the heart of an international crisis. We are not here to start a war with Iraq. We might be here to finish one. This is as serious as it gets. Previously, the Iranian regime continues to fuel conflict, terror, and turmoil throughout the Middle East and beyond. In the Gulf, tensions rose as the Iranian Navy threatened British flag tankers. Three Iranian boats tried to block a British-owned oil tanker. And HMS Duncan was ordered to the region. Be under no illusion, we're heading on, on operations. I'm going to want, and I know I'm going to get, pretty steely, hard-edged leadership. HMS Duncan is nine days away from the Gulf on an urgent new mission. The escalation of tensions in the Gulf now has hit the point where the Navy needs to send more ships to safeguard British shipping in the Gulf. Captain Tom Trent has been instructed to get there as quickly as possible in case of further Iranian threats. News has just come through. There's been a major development. If you obey, you will be safe. Alter your course to uh, 360 degrees immediately. Over. A British flag tanker, the Stena Impero, has been captured by Iranian forces. Iran's Revolutionary Guard dropping onto the Impero's deck and taking control. What does it mean for Duncan? If ever you wanted more of a reason to go and do what we're about to do, then this is it, isn't it? We're a bit of disappointment that we haven't been able to get there in time, but we did a good few days out, you know, we're doing the best we can. Duncan is over 2,000 miles away from the Strait of Hormuz, a narrow waterway off the coast of Iran, where the Stena Impero has just been captured. Clear over there. Clear over there. Come the ship company. The situation with Iran is unlike anything Duncan has faced before. Whole ship company, monster in the hangar. The whole ship company, monster in the hangar. The ship's second in command is Executive Officer Paul Caddy. Shots have been fired in the straight. So far, no one has been killed. The ante is now going up, and it's time for a real warship to step in and, if needs be, bring the fight to the Iranians. We are not here to start a war with Iran. We might be here to finish a war with Iran if they choose to push on and try and start one with the West. 
This is going to be fairly hot, fairly tiring. At times it's going to be tense, it might even get a bit scary. Anyone here not fancy going to the Iranian Gulf and show the Iranians not to f around? No? Here it is. I'd f that. Anyone not got the balls for this? <laughs> Thank you very much. Get yourselves to be scrap and get some cool hogging. We're trained to do this, and and this is what we're made to do. But as those those poor merchant men on ships are just trying to do their job, and now they're they're petrified, and um, I just want to help them. It's always something at the forefront of your mind: the possibility that things could go south, and that you could have to make decisions which would result in lives being lost. Yes, certain people are worried, and that's natural. They haven't faced this sort of thing before. We don't like getting shot at. We don't want to get shot at. However, we're ready for it. Good afternoon, Duncan. This is the Bish speaking. Just reminding you that at 1330, there's church in the ward room. Um, if you'd like to come, it'd be great. There'll be some singing. Brent van der Lind is the ship's chaplain, known as the Bish. Thank you. My job is to look after the, the spiritual welfare of the crew. He's holding a special service before they arrive in the Gulf. I guess I'm more vigilant than I was before this happened, and that I'm looking at everybody, making sure I get around, speaking to everybody. So the last few days I've just spent walking around, just chatting about asking how they're feeling. Okay. Wow, what a great turnout. Good afternoon. Let's stand and let's sing together. You know, there was a very deliberate plan to get the ship mentally and physically prepared for this phase. Priority is focused military operations. We are right at the moment, front and centre on the world stage. We've been on the news, so that's really powerful. Hopefully it won't get to anything too sensational, but that's what we're ready for. You are the beast in my troubled sea. Hey, can I have a seat? The crew don't have long to wait. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The mission in the Gulf will soon begin. With HMS Duncan six days from the Gulf, normal duties must still be maintained. Yeah, sometimes officers do get their hands dirty. Lieutenant Megan Mackley Heath is the most senior female officer on board. But today, she's occupied with bin duty. I can already smell it, and we're only in the compartment. I haven't even opened the door yet. Separating the rubbish from the recycling earns her an extra six pounds a day. Ooh, good. So, you know, people back in the UK moan about having to separate their rubbish. It's like that on crack. We call rubbish in the Navy gash. Yeah, we don't call anything by its normal name in the Navy. You come down halfway empty. You smell my hands? Oh, it's so wet. Doesn't get better than this, does it? Oh. This makes me so mad. It's just laziness.
going to make a passive aggressive sign to put on the bins. If we can separate it at source, then hopefully we won't have to do this again. Yeah. Stick it on my sign. Yeah. I restrain from saying separate your gash correctly, otherwise these bins will be removed because I know they'll get graffitied by rude people. Sometimes I wonder why I'm single and then I think that I do jobs like this. Hopefully that'll stop them. You fucker! What other job do you wake up to a Nerf gun fight? It's 5 p.m. and time for a change of shift. I think the weirdest thing is waking up and getting like steak and chips for breakfast. For Jack Mercer, it's also time for breakfast. It's quite difficult in a sense that you never get more than four hours sleep at any one time. So it does take its toll. You get used to it. Not having a full night's sleep for three and a half weeks is not something that most people would have to comprehend uh, outside of the military. Oh, that's not the cue, is it? Are you shitting me? French theme night. Yeah, and we've got roast on. <laughs> roast French lamb. Humour is the only way. Uh, Humour is the only way to get through the more difficult parts. This is a cracking breakfast. <laughs> Bridge as well. Bridge. Jack is officer of the watch. He runs the team that drives the ship on behalf of the captain. For the period of the four hours or six hours that you've got the ship, you're responsible for pretty much everything that happens on it. I'm only 26. It's quite unusual to be in a workplace that is so responsible for the functioning of the entire ship. Jack needs to judge how fast he can push Duncan to get to the Gulf. When it's quite benign conditions, it's relatively straightforward. But then when you've got a multi-threat environment, it becomes a lot more complicated. You've got to think quite tactically about where to position the ship. But as his shift begins, more news is breaking in the Gulf. Sat inside their ship, seemingly relaxed, this is the crew of the Stena Impero. The footage was released by Iranian state media. This is the first time the captured crew have been seen. As the diplomatic wrangling continues, they remain effectively hostage. The Straits for me is kind of like a one of the main arteries for the UK's economy. So if you shut that straight, within weeks the lights go out in the UK. Set course to starboard 010. We want to be able to make the Gulf a safer place than it is at the moment for British shipping. We want to be able to reassure traffic going through that they can conduct their business. Uh, as they have been without threat from another state. If people on this ship get this wrong, it will result in conflict between the UK and Iran, and probably that will escalate. So it's vital that we, we get this right. Below decks, Duncan sprung a leak. A lot of water coming out of the intercooler, so we're just investigating to see what's caused it and whether we can rectify it. Megan's trying to fix the problem before it threatens the engines. Can you not mark out which plate it's coming from? Okay. They're not here. So we're just about to see how bad the water is that's coming out. So this is the intercooler. 
So all of these plates are packed together. So what they're looking at is tightening these bolts to compress it, and that should stop the water coming out. Yes! It is my favourite tool. I'm not allowed to touch it very often. See how stiff it is to turn. Big spanner has an immediate effect. It's still like a tiny pinhole leak, but if you imagine the water that was coming out previously, and now it's like a tripping tap. So, I'll do a couple more turns, that should be it. I've learned I can handle more than I thought. I am a lot calmer with it, but maybe that's just come with experience and the fact that I know the plant a bit better now. Two weeks after receiving new orders to escort British tankers, HMS Duncan has arrived at her destination. At the entrance to the Strait of Hormuz in the Gulf. She has an appointment with another Royal Navy warship. HMS Montrose permanently patrols these waters. Go on. Montrose's captain has more information about the Impero. So, when the Stena Imperio was taken, we were sort of rapidly transiting to try and make the interception that we were about 20 minutes too late. So by the time I arrived on the scene, there's nothing I could sort of disrupt, which is, as you can imagine, deeply frustrating. Key point is that we found that this section around here... Captain Trent needs, needs as much intelligence as possible about the current situation. This area here, that's a bit I'm interested in. Yeah, I think it just so happened that we found a bit of a sweet spot where we were just doing a patrol and it seemed that our persistent presence in this area was of some concern to them. Yeah. So clearly we decided to remain there just for a little longer. But it's that kind of what happens if we, by serendipity, happen to be in the same area when something kicks off. Yeah. Now clearly you're seeing I, it to I've me. been doing it. So by, I've been doing it for 28 by, days. So I tell you what, you, if you need some headlines, you can take it, yeah? It's been professionally challenging in the face of some pretty interesting Iranian aggression that we perhaps haven't seen for the last few years. We've been in the thick of that, but the arrival of Duncan signifies the fact that now we've got a better chance of success. That sends quite a powerful message yeah. to the Iranians. Okay, look, I'll say cheerio. Thanks, mate. Go well. Yeah, it's, it's, nice. Nice. it's really nice to see a will. The theory is all well and good, but you need to look the guy in the eye and say, how have you found it? And that's really important. After the update from HMS Montrose, the captain gathers his most senior team. The Iranians tend to use fairly commercial fast boats. They do have the potential to do us quite significant harm, so we've got to be right on our guard with this. They're very fast, they're very manoeuvrable. The strategic shock of taking damage on a major warship like this would, would be a real problem. We're completely confident that we can respond quickly and accurately with force protection weapons if, we, if required. The worst possible thing could be any sort of incident. People's levels of anxiety about what we're going into, and levels of people's uh, bravery, and all these sorts of things are bubbling, bubbling away. But so far, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, well done. Thank you very much. The threat from Iran is likely to come in the form of small, fast-moving gunboats. But their navy is notoriously hard to predict. Iran will react to us. There will be some interest in us. They will send out units to, to see us. And hopefully it will be professional and safe. If they're not, then we're ready to 
do with it. In just a few hours' time, Duncan will come face to face with Iranian forces. That's the uh, transit uh, with the Eaps. Watch, confirm you've done the big horn. There we go. Uh, perfect on the hour. It's 3 p.m. Duncan has just entered the Strait of Hormuz. Her first task is to guard a British flag tanker, the Mid Nature as they sail a 100-mile journey along the coast of Iran. It's the first time that we've gone through, so we need to expect that we're going to get some kind of interaction from the Iranians. The warfare team have a plan. The lads are dragging the aircraft out. Our primary role is some force protection in this situation, so acting as a visible deterrent. Three elements uh, today's flying. The first is the surface search, so that's going out 20 miles ahead of the ship. Pilot Johnny Hamlin is preparing the helicopter in case the Iranians make a move on the mid-nature. At which point we'll use these aircraft physically um, to try and move any units approaching the mid-nature away, be it through just through the pure sort of noise, but the downwash uh, through physically the aircraft itself. Flying is proved as briefed. The helicopter can spot small Iranian vessels at range, giving Duncan vital time to react. We know that this specific threat um, is trying to take a British merchant vessel, so you kind of hope nothing happens. We've got a whole bunch of weapons at the back of the aircraft. Conduct a surface search. To this advantage, that's Helicopters building up that maritime picture so that we know know what we're likely to come across as we as we make our transit. Ben Dorrington is monitoring from the ops room. Okay, EOSPs. As soon as we're back up, let, let's get both cameras straight on it one more time. We've got some intelligence indicating where different vessels uh, are located. It's a lot harder to find the very small craft that come out from behind the islands or leave, leave ports at the very last minute. Sentry to advantage, radio check. Here's this character down here. Just a few minutes into the flight, there's 223 at 2.9 miles, tracking 350, speed 7. Gonna we'll have a quick look down into that one. The long range camera has picked up an Iranian warship. This is Vantage, two personnel on the medium caliber anti aircraft machine gun on the aft of the flying bridge. Number. Her guns are manned. Suspect closing. And she's heading towards Duncan and the mid nature. You recorded, you recorded some time. I've been recording loads, yeah. This is warship, this is a Sephard Air warship. I'm approaching to get the more information out. The Iranians make contact to announce their intentions. Uh, he's saying that he's going to approach uh, in order to gain further information. Uh, he's been honoring it slowly. Within minutes of Duncan's arrival in the Strait of Hormuz, the Iranians are making their presence known. Surface search, head of Duncan's position. Range? A range 700 yards steady. Paralleling. Uh, Lookout bearing green line zero. All major weapon systems remain covered with the exception of the AA gun aft. 
the bridge team are concerned about coming into weapons range of the Iranians. Yeah, so my, my trip wires, if you push us, I will direct him to turn his weapons on. The crew must defend the mid nature. Tank now drawing right. Duncan manoeuvres herself between the British flag tanker and the Iranian warship to act as a shield. So actually, she's got to go a long way around us if she wanted to get the other side of it. Well, we have to cross Suddenly, four more Iranian vessels arrive directly in Duncan's path. Uh, they're stopped. They're stopped. I would suggest that's an IRGCF. Yeah. Dow, there's a big block in the middle. This is British warship Delta 3 South. Is three. I'm going to you are closing my position. I repeat, to clarify your defense. intentions. Yes. So Leave us ahead. Duncan issues an urgent warning, demanding the Iranians move out of the way. I think no response. Just outside two and a half kilometers. Temperature blocking this now. Start the course of the tanker. Duncan's helicopter begins to hover above the nearest Iranian gunboat. Fucking hell, this ship is the twitchiest. Oh, there's nothing bold if he wants to fuck around like this. The downdraft from her blades has an immediate effect. Oh, yeah, she appears to turned already. The gunboat is forced to back off. Nice. The other Iranian vessels move away too. That is now RTB to the force. Stand down, M3. Duncan has kept the mid nature safe from Iran. So, from my perspective, first interaction with the Iranians. First off, no one got shot. That's always a good day in the office. So, well done. Great work, guys. We'll be doing that again. Uh, it's great to get on and do the first operational tasking, the first sort of escort task at our mission out here. I think the Iranians came out to play. They're perhaps slightly a bit off more than they could chew. If you've got a helicopter hovering above you, you're not going to be able to hear your radio. You've not even had to point weapons at anyone, and all of a sudden you've, you've degraded their ability to talk to each other. You know, it's five tons of pretty loud violence that go past you. Nets. I can't wait to not put my hair up every day when I go to my next job. I might not even brush my hair. With the Strait of Hormuz behind them, Megan's taking a few minutes out on the bridge with her best friend, Pete Howell. If you had to branch transfer to another branch, what would you be? Ooh. What, as an officer? Yeah. Oh, let's do both. I'd quite like to be a chef. I know it's ironic because I can't cook. Four, five, six, zero, four, five, six, so I'd probably make zero. quite a good chef. <laughs> you know you can buy, you can get handbags through the Navy. 
but you have to pay for them. Why would I pay £40 for an absolutely god-awful black handbag? Underwear as well. I want to order some of this underwear. It's fire retardant. Below decks... These are for everybody. OK. The post has just arrived. I was very excited to get some mail. Come for you. Oh. There you go. How does it feel to get mail? Don't think so. It's been weeks since the last delivery. Uh, again, it's put it at home in a box. I hope the coffee has arrived because if it hasn't arrived, we've got problems. We've got big problems. And Megan has a special parcel. Yes. Animals, my fave. Jelly babies. <gasps> I love my job, but it's the people at home that keep you going by sending you fluffy flip flops and gorgeous earrings. A young woman raised her hand to swear to protect her country anywhere. A promise made straight from her heart for the journey she was about to start. The pride was written all over her face because in the Navy she found her place. Stay safe, Meg. So proud of you. Can't wait for you to come home. Aww. From Rach, our best friend back home. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to go home and see my actual family and I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm really, really lucky. And I, Rach's poem about being away and I wouldn't change it. I, I love the Navy. And I know that's really sad, but um, yeah, I, I do love it. Don't you cry. No, I suppose not, yeah. It's just after dawn. Speeds up to 26 knots. We're off to see a disused oil platform that has been uh, transformed into a, an intelligence gathering platform by the Iranian Navy. Duncan's latest orders are to find out more about a suspected Iranian base just a few miles from Iran's coastline. We'll close this intelligence gathering platform uh, in order to get some imagery, try and ascertain its capability, how many people are on it, uh, so that we better understand the area in which we're operating. There's two positions being pushed out. These old platforms, or observation posts, are in international waters. There's no restricted area around it. I think the Iranians have got to a state where they believe that they have the right to order other people around. Uh, just called ISR platform, as far as I'm aware. The suspected surveillance base is within sight. Yeah, vision on the rig. We've got. Uh, three oil rigs ahead of us, one of which is the intelligence gathering platform for the Iranian Navy. But the Iranians have seen Duncan coming. Hello, visual. Hi. Green 130, six miles inbound. And they're launching four warships in response. HMS Duncan has been ordered to gather intelligence on a suspected Iranian surveillance platform. But four Iranian warships have just been launched. We've got one certain Iranian combatant, which is a Houdon class fast attack craft. And we've got three small ribs. And I expect them to start closing this pretty soon. I think they've just started doing that, so I'm going to back it up. Iran are sending their warships right at Duncan to stop them getting closer to the base. Yeah. Inbound now. Intention to make ready. Do not close my unit to avoid miscalculation. Over. Yeah. 
an Iranian Houdon attack craft is getting too close. Starboard watch, expand to surface. Threat is waterborne, starboard size. The call is made to man the guns. If Iran's warship doesn't back down, Duncan may have to use them. What's she doing? She looks like she's steady now. He's increasing speed again. I think he's coming a good <laughs> Get him a flare. As quick as you can. Two, step back to eliminate. Roger, standing by. The crew make a decision to fire a warning flare. Right, get her out there, there you go. This is British warship. Oh, right. I'm about to illuminate you with the flare. Starboard S2, illuminate, contact at green nine zero. No response yet. Great no response yet. No response yet. No Yeah, I think she's gone five degrees to starboard. It looks like the Iranians are backing down. OCRM style batteries stand back from the weapons. Duncan's weapons stand down too, in a bid to de-escalate the situation. Thank you for complying with my previous instruction. This is the closest Duncan's ever been to opening fire on Iranian forces. The Islamic Republic of Iran is in charge of maintaining peace and security in the region and has... We had a, a platform which the Iranians are trying to use for their own intelligence purposes, which we want to have a look at, and it's in international waters, so we're entitled to do it. And they reacted to it, and I think we caught, caught them out. I think they're under pressure. It's quite nice, now and again, just to just to sort of tease them for a change. Everyone's always surprised at how few people we have on the bridge to drive the ship. If we get it wrong, everything goes wrong. Literally everything goes wrong. And that's what makes us the Navy that we are. Happy, sad Friday. We should have been home today. Hello. Hello. Happy, sad Friday. I can't wear my dark clothing. I'm in mourning. Unfortunately, we're still stuck in uh, the Gulf. Cheers, bitch. Oh. Today was scheduled to be Duncan's homecoming until the mission in the Gulf extended their deployment. So I thought I would dress in a dark, Colored cassock, go around the head and suits. Because in the Navy, we like a bit of dark humor. It's Happy Sad Friday. Oh. There you go. Cheers, Bish. Yeah. With home still weeks away, the Bish is trying to keep up morale. I got one of the coolest jobs in the Navy. So even though I feel a bit sad, I get to make other people feel a bit happy. And that makes me a bit happy. Hello, Captain. Captain, sad Friday. Thank you so I much. I thought I'd dress up for the occasion. Yeah. You look suitably terrifying. Today is the 23rd of August. That um, Everyone remembers that that's the day we're meant to be alongside Portsmouth. And right now we're about four and a half thousand miles away from Portsmouth. So I've failed to get the ship where they wanted to be. 
for many of the crew. This is their most meaningful mission. Thank you. I think we've been away so long now that I try not to think about when we're going home until we are waiting off the Isle of Wight with our families waving at Round Towner. That's when I'm ready to say that we're going home. One day, people will write books about the conflict going on right now between Iran and the UK. And we will have a better story as a result of this, definitely. The ship's company have done incredibly well. And I, th and I think a lot of our success can be attributed to some, some very good uh, junior and senior rates. As a collective, I think we've, we've certainly made a difference. It's, it's extraordinary. Um, and when I get home, no one can take it away from me because I'll have done it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Next time. Okay, so listening then, so we've had a fire in a fire gas turbine. An engine fire threatens to cripple the ship. It's a perfect condition for a fire to thrive. It's a large space and it's be a major loss of capability if that compartment's lost. Attention all ships, attention all ships, attention all ships. Keep work the area forward. Iran steps up its efforts to take another British tanker hostage. Just be careful here, mate. You're going to have to watch him like a hawk. Getting back is nice, especially when we've had such a busy deployment as it has been. And Duncan finally comes home. To see our family and, and friends is, is going to be great. It's lovely to be back with my parents, and it's nice to be off the ship on dry land. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's really nice to be home after seven months of work. I've come home. <laughs> <laughs>